Welcome to Tahrir Square. Earlier this year, I covered the amazing, exhilarating, exuberant democracy movement here. Well, that democracy movement triumphed in overthrowing President Mubarak. These days, most of the people have gone home. Most of the cameras have retreated as well. But these days, frankly, Egypt is looking a little bit messy. Nearly two months after street protests inspired a democratic revolution here in Egypt, order is breaking down somewhat. On March 8th, International Women's Day, gangs of men hurled insults at female marchers. When Mohamed al baradei the Nobel Peace Prize winner, tried to vote in a recent referendum, a mob chased him away. And just last week, this footage from YouTube shows the military breaking up a student sit-in at Cairo University. The military has even proposed a law banning protests. There is a determined effort to stop the revolution in its tracks. My consolation is that every day we pass, the revolution gains, gains some strength. The West is worried that Egypt could descend into chaos or fall under the influence of Islamic groups like the well-organized Muslim Brotherhood. The misunderstanding of Islam uh, is uh, wrong. The Islamophobia is wrong because we are part of the revolution. We are keen to give another model of democracy to the whole world. The fears about Islamism arise because Muslim activists are becoming more outspoken, sometimes even bullying. At Cairo University, a professor told me that a Muslim Brotherhood student threatened to shoot a dean with a gun unless he resigned on the spot. But for now, my message is, calm down. To me, it seems likely that Egypt won't actually change as much as many fear. The army will continue to run the show. The most likely next president is probably Amr Musa, a veteran politician who would amount to a breath of fresh air, but not a gust of it. And the Muslim Brotherhood seems to have been moderated by being brought into the system. We need to participate with all political factions to build a new democratic system. Like Spain after Franco or Indonesia after its dictator Suharto was ousted in 1998, roads to democracy are always bumpy. Democracy isn't a moment, but a process. I think more important than the speed with which things change, I think we are concerned about the nature of the change. We don't have a revolution every year, and that is the time to affect these constitutional and fundamental changes. So let's be realistic and patient, and put some faith in the young people at the center of the revolution. They are the watchdogs of their own future. In Cairo for The New York Times, I'm Nicholas Kristof.